honor to introduce my father, the Reverend Dr. Sun Myung Moon, our next speaker, who will deliver the Founder's Address. I have a profound love and respect for my parents, and I try to love them and honor them, as all my brothers and sisters do, with our lives. <laughs> However, I've come to realize very deeply that my own understanding of them in the past has been quite limited. I once thought that my parents were simply my physical parents, the parents of their 14 biological children. And as many of you know, in our tradition, we recognize true parents as the second coming of Christ, the Lord of the second advent, Amen. the true parents. And in this position, they stand as a spiritual parent. Parents' life course has not always been happy and with smiles. That has been one of inheriting the true love of God, the most difficult path, perfecting that true love and bequeathing it to humankind. In this way, true parents have led the way in the liberation of God, and each one of us is called to do our best to follow that example. In carrying out their providential mission, they have, like Christ, suffered, been tortured, been imprisoned, scorned, mocked, and hated for our sake. Like Christ, they have taken on the burdens of our sins and made a way for us to be forgiven by God. Like Christ, they have suffered the torment and damnation that we would deserve for our sins and have paid the price for us to once again come before God justified as sons and daughters. For who amongst us is without sin? This is a path of Christ and a path that our true parents have walked. Please be advised that like Jesus, Father Moon does not speak to please our ears or the ears of the world. As we know, Jesus in John, Matthew, and Luke vehemently challenged his contemporaries, even scandalously calling them sons of your father the devil and a brood of vipers. These words are not certainly, are not politically correct, but Jesus said these shocking words in love. Father Moon also speaks with the same love and total commitment to God's Word. He speaks with a burning sense of the absolute urgency of his holy mission to build God's kingdom where all can return to God's embrace, forgiven and redeemed. He does not speak to stroke our egos, but to liberate us from our egos. Amen. He continues at the age of 92 to proclaim the Word of God around the world, literally at the risk of his life. In the process of his candid speaking, he will no doubt challenge some of our most firmly held beliefs. But if we can open our spiritual eyes to see and our ears to hear, we will catch a glimpse of a loving God crying out and calling out to his children whose hearts need his forgiveness, his grace, and his love. <laughs> in order to usher in a new era of registration of the kingdom of heaven that brings an end to war, 